studio at Windsor High School, we're about to do a cooking demonstration of the Battle of the Brittle. We have two techniques we're going to use, a microwave technique and a stovetop technique as we compete to see which brittle is best. I'm Marie Gannister, I'm the culinary instructor, and my assistant, David Leslie, and and I am Pam Yucatel Velasquez, the Bacon and Pastry Instructor, and my assistant today is... Kirsten Landeros. And today we're going to show you two techniques on ways to make peanut brittle, which is a great holiday treat. Peanut brittle is um, a very sweet treat. You use high fructose corn syrup, syrup and white sugar, and you mix it together. And in my case, I'm going to use the microwave, half a cup of high fructose corn syrup, and a cup of sugar and I'm going to microwave it on high for three and a half minutes. And Pam, while mine is microwaving, Pam will tell you about what she is going to be doing. Also, I'm going to toast my peanuts and Pam is not. You use raw peanuts in this recipe, butter, vanilla, sugar, and the high fructose corn syrup. The trick ingredient and the secret to this is baking soda. Bicarbonate of soda, when it's added to the hot, fatty, mixed, sugary mixture, it creates carbon dioxide. And those gas bubbles um, create the layers in the brittle so that when the brittle comes out, it breaks very easily. It snaps apart. So those little bubbles in the sugar break it apart. So right now I'm going to toast my peanuts while Pam is telling you about her technique. So we're on um, a stove top here and we have our um, cup of sugar and our half a cup of corn syrup. And we are right now melting everything together and we're going to try to get this um, melted up and boiling and bring it up to 235 degrees, which is a soft ball in um, the candy language. So after we are done getting this all boiled up, we will be adding our peanuts and trying to get those cooked up as well and keep cooking up our sugar to um, help form the candy. Inserting our, you want to make sure that gets mm -hmm. up on that so we can watch the temperature. So these two recipes are actually from my mother who, um, used to always make the stovetop recipe until she found the microwave recipe that she really enjoyed. I really enjoy the um, stovetop recipe over the microwave, so that's where we decided that we're going to have this battle to see which one is the better one. When you make candy in a pot on a stovetop, you have to have a candy thermometer, and you're looking for a certain temperature. What temperature are you looking for today, Pam? I'm looking for 235 degrees. And so is that a soft boil? It's a soft ball. A soft ball. Yes, it would come. So if it was, the um, sugar was cooled off, it would come and make like a more of a soft ball type of a, um, not hard, not as in soft ball that you would throw, but a soft texture. Hmm. So as you can see in front, we have these um, sheet pans and we've covered them with aluminum foil and we've greased them with butter and you want to make sure that the foil is tucked in and around so it doesn't move around when you pour the, your finished product on it. So you can get those prepped up. You want to have everything prepped up before you start to make this because it moves right along once you're going. Out here I have um, a, half, a teaspoon of vanilla, a, table, a, teaspoon, a tablespoon of butter, and a teaspoon of the ever popular baking soda. And my peanuts are getting toasty. It's just a dry skillet, medium high heat, and you can might be able to see some shimmer of heat coming off of that. We just don't want to put the raw nuts into our mixture here. So we're at almost 225. We're getting there. So what is that? As saying? you can see, the sugar has um, melted, and it is becoming more of a syrup right now. If you were to get this on your hands, it will burn and leave a mark. Sugar burn is the worst kind of burn you can get because it keeps burning down through the layers of okay, the dermis. So we are now at 235 and we're going to go ahead and add our peanuts. Put that up, please. Lift the pot up. You would take the 
this. So we're going to bring our fire down to a medium um, boil so that way it can go. Now he's going to stir, stir, stir. This can take anywhere from 5, 10, 15 minutes. It just all depends on um, what the sugar wants to do and what the peanuts want to do. So what we're looking for is um, a golden brown look to it. Just keep stirring. <laughs> So mine's just come out of the microwave. I'm going to mix together my sugar and my cornstarch. And again, it's forming a softball right here. Corn syrup. Cornstarch? Did I say cornstarch? <laughs> Good Lord. You'd really be thickening it up that way. <laughs> it does look like it's thickening. So I'm going to add my peanuts right to that. I'm trying not to burn my assistant. And when you want to mix that up for us, and then it's going to go back in the microwave for a brief amount of time. What, how, much, how long is that? Three minutes. Three minutes in the microwave on high. Now, it's really important here for Christian to make sure he keeps stirring because if this was to stick on the bottom, we might have a burnt batch and we'd have to throw it out and start over. So it's, it's kind of a tedious job. That's why the microwave comes in a little bit handier, but it, the outcome is wonderful. Hopefully. Hopefully the outcome is wonderful. So um, baking soda adds this amazing texture. If we didn't add baking soda, we would get really nice toffee with this recipe. And it wouldn't be brittle. It would just kind of break our teeth as we stretched it out. But the baking soda increases the, um, the snap. Again, that's what's so amazing about if you look at peanut brittle very closely, there's just these tiny little bubbles and they, are, they stay there suspended once the brittle hardens. And that's what gives you the snap. How many of you like peanut brittle? Everybody like peanut brittle? Yeah, it's a great holiday thing. And that's why I think in the battle of the brittle that my version, the microwave version, will win. Actually, it's not my version. It's Miss Mom. Miller's <laughs> version, Julie Miller. So, oops, what's it looking like, Pam? We're getting there. We're getting a little bit browner, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, but so we're not ready So yet. what's your favorite thing to cook, David? Uh, pesto. Pesto. Maybe that should be our next cooking demo. A little <laughs> pesto in here. Do you make it with basil or with parsley? Basil. Oh, I like the parsley version. I'm very partial to that. What's your favorite thing to cook, Christian? Cheese steaks. What's a cheese steak? It's where you, uh, you, uh, it's like a soup, but, or when you... Is there any meat involved in the cheesesteak? Yes, there, there is <laughs> meat involved. There is, like uh, a Philly cheesesteak type yeah, of thing? Like uh, there's tri-tip and you cut it up really thin. And then you uh, fry it with then, uh, candy onions or stir-fry onions. And then uh, bell peppers or jalapenos if you want heat. And then you toast the buns and kind of melt the cheese on top after cooking it. Sounds great. It is delicious. So Pam, what's your favorite thing to cook? I like to bake, and I usually, baking uh, cakes or pies are my favorite things. And what about you, Mrs. Ganster? I don't like to bake. I do bake, but I don't like to. I am, I like to cook, and I like to cook things like stews and soups. I make soup most every night when it's this time of year. Last night I made roasted cabbage steaks with balsamic glaze. My family looked at me like I was a little crazy, but they were actually really good. You take a red cabbage and you slice it. And you make this wonderful balsamic we're, we're, we're honey glaze you and bake it. Because we're, we're, we're at our point here, if you want to come oh. and look at the nice golden um, brown look to it. But we're going to go ahead and take the, um, this off the stove. Oh, wow. And now we are going to add our vanilla. We can start here in some of the little fizz. And we're going to add our butter. And are we ready for the foam? You can leave it on the fire and stir and you can start seeing it bubbling up and that's exactly what we want it to do and we're going to go ahead and stir that until it is all melted and all incorporated start stirring and over here i'm adding the butter and the vanilla to the microwave version and then we're going to pop it back in for one minute 
And then we're going to add our baking soda. So grab that butter piece, yeah. Put so that, now he's putting it on our buttered um, cookie sheet. Side. And throw that back in. And then he's going to go ahead and just spread it all out. How long does it take to harden? It's going to take, depending on the weather or, or how warm or cool it is, it's going to take about uh, maybe a good 15 minutes to harden. With we these, have to um, wait with these, minutes? with these metal, oh. no, we had brought ours. Magic of TV. We, um, with our, um, the metal tables, it will conduct heat, so it would stay really hot here for a while. But this is our version, and you want to take out. Now we've waited 15 minutes, and ta-da! <laughs> Voila! And right now, this is what happens. It gets nice and hard, and it comes right off, and you then would just break it into your pieces. And you can see the little honeycomb type of um, texture to it. Thank you, carbon dioxide. Yes. And now we're going to add our baking soda and see what we what kind of results we get. <laughs> we're going to hopefully hopefully David doesn't burn himself. Okay, now grab that and start stirring. Is the pan too hot to grab? And as soon as we incorporate that baking soda in there, we're going to put ours on the table on our prepared pan. And ours is a little paler than yours, Pam, i got to say. Ours looks a little bit paler. We're going to go with that term. Yes. Beautiful. Now, can you dump that out there? Do you want this? You want me to do it? Okay. Oops. Let me get out of your way. So I think the texture that comes out is a little different, even though it was basically the exact same ingredients. Um, ours doesn't spread as easily as the stovetop version. Now the, you know what? The test, though, is tasting it. And so we're going to take ours and put it down below and let it cool, because we have a version also. Here, take the bowl. <laughs> and this is our version that we made a little earlier, and it cracks up nicely and we can um, again it's it's not quite that lovely brown color that Pam's got because it didn't get the direct heat of the stovetop it got the, the molecule bending heat of a microwave but we won't know what you think until you taste it so Pam do you have a little plate you could put yours on yes yeah, so you have it down there I do yes So we'll put Pam's there, mine's there. And so we need some guinea pigs to come and taste this. Who will be brave enough to taste our yes, please do. peanut brittle in the battle of the brittle? So you have to take one of each. You have to look at the camera and tell, tell us your names, too, I think, <laughs> don't you? I'm uh, Carson Glover. First trying out. Grow yourself a <laughs> the stove top. <laughs> stove top in your left hand, and that's the. This is the microwave. Put it in your right hand. Microwave. And the stove top. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> and microwave in your right hand. Okay. There's more. Oh, if you have to. Switch your hands. <laughs> Wait, I think I just mixed them up. Nope. It's, easily, it's, it's easy to tell them apart because of the color. It's oh, microwave. Wait, right. there's a vote for microwave. How many other votes do we get for microwave? We got a stovetop. 
We got a Mike, John, Ben. Who else? Ty. We got a stovetop. Pam's. Tam, Pam's. Oh, so we're two and two. Two and two, and we got a tie. What are you raising your hand? What do you say? All right, three oh, to two. Three to two. Oh, four, four to two. two. <laughs> so the battle of the of the brittle. Anybody else got any votes back there? Stovetop five two. Stovetop takes it. Okay. Oh, so oh, two ties. So yeah. that's yeah. I still. All right. Stovetop still wins. All right, Pam. It was good. It was good Thank fun. You. Thanks, guys. Thank you for your help. All right. All right. Thank you, David. Yay. <laughs> High five. Thanks, All you. Right. Is there any other questions about this? Absolutely. <laughs>